Hello to you being. May you and all beings be happy. But don't kill. Copenhagen, Denmark. March 2017. Four degrees Celsius. This vlog, and the first one, uh, is called Seeding the Dhamma in Denmark. But first the normal intro. Namo. Tasso. Bhagavato. Arahato. Samma Sambuddhasa. Worthy. Anabha. And perfectly self-enlightened. Was the blessed Buddha. Uh, first, some feedback on my father's situation. He's 89 years old and he has cancer, but he's home from the hospital and he's uh, ticking around uh, inside and also a little bit outside. Uh, he's, he's okay, basically. Uh, he's not acutely sick, he's not dying, uh, but he has some uh, senile dementia. But he's okay, uh, he's still ticking. I will make a short uh, portrait of him called Hakon, which is his name, uh, which I will bring later on the same channel. While being here in Denmark, you can see it's spring. Uh, when I came here, it was fairly cold, 3 degrees Celsius, and there has been snow this winter also. Uh, a thought came to my mind that it has been a long-standing wish for me to bring the Dhamma, early Buddhism, back here to Denmark, who gave me a free education in, as a medical doctor. There's a, a, both a need uh, for people who are fairly stressed, and there's also an interest in Buddhism in general, and in Eastern philosophy, and yoga uh, in particular. However, there's almost no knowledge whatsoever about what the historical Buddha Gautama actually said 2,500 years ago. And the, the reason for that is so there is uh, three monasteries here in, in Denmark and also the same situation goes for all of Europe actually. There's very very few monasteries and very very few monks there uh, to propagate the Dhamma, to share the Dhamma to the local uh, residents. And those that are, uh, all these three that are in Denmark, they are of Asian origin. This means that uh, it's uh, usually Thai, uh, the Thai communities that has, has a, a monastery, a small monastery, with some monks. But these monks are Thai monks, they speak only Thai language. So they can uh, not easily communicate with the Danish people. Can't do in English, uh, but this severely hampers the effort to get the Dhamma uh, out into society. Uh, so uh, there's fairly limited Dhamma sharing from uh, the monastery is here, the three monasteries in, in the entire Denmark, five million population. And the same goes for, for all of Europe, actually. So, if one should seriously uh, get the Dhamma to root in the Western world, then there's a need for Western monks who speak the local language as a mother tongue to stay there over a prolonged period and uh, to share Dhamma with the local people. Then, then, then will trickle out in society, little by little, through newspapers, uh, television, and so on, internet, meditation courses, Buddhist coaching, uh, uh, regular uh, Dhamma meetings, and uh, various other Dhamma activities. This can only be done if one lives as a, a local monk, speaking the local language in the community that uh, is supposed to be benefiting from the Dhamma. So, uh, in this regard, uh, I had an idea about I make either, it could be a small uh, hermitage, like the one you see here, a small building uh, in the forest, a forest hermitage here in Denmark, or it could be a forest monastery for two or three monks, or it could be a, a full-fledged meditation center, as you see, there's a building here, 
that uh, two years ago was shown to me to be allocated to this purpose, but who needed, which need a roof, a major project. So uh, what I'm suggesting is kind of like a, a Dhamma project called Seeding the Dhamma in Denmark. And uh, if anybody is seriously interested in, in helping, assisting this project grow, so the Dhamma is seeded first in Denmark and then maybe in Scandinavia, and, and then s spread out little by little, trickling out to Europe, uh, then uh, I would be very he helpful, uh, very gratitude and very thankful for any assistance uh, uh, you can provide. However, one should be prepared to say that uh, even though one can, can start with such a small building like this one, there needs to be heating because in Denmark we have this uh, climate that, that in the winter time uh, there's snow and frost. And so you cannot uh, live uh, in a tent, for example, <laughs> like you can in Asia uh, or under very uh, small, uh, small simple circumstances because of this uh, weather conditioning. Today it's very nice, uh, but in winter time it can be up to 10 degrees minus, and there you will not survive if you don't have isolation. And this means also electricity, and this means running costs. Uh, secondly, the, uh, the prices for housing and for land is fairly high in Denmark. It's not uh, actually top notch in the world, but it's fairly high compared to the living standard. However, it is not impossible uh, to get these places. Uh, the woodpecker is talking it with here. The woodpecker agrees. Certainly so. Nevertheless, uh, if anybody is interested in, in this seeding the Dhamma in Denmark project, in assisting this on the long term, uh, starting with making a Buddhist hermitage like this, uh, with a small kitchen and a small bathroom, uh, and isolation and heating, uh, then uh, please contact me uh, on my email, bhantesamahita at gmail.com, b-h-a-n-t dot s-a-m-a-h-a-t-a at gmail.com, or if one uh, needs to be anonymous, and this is very welcome, and is I think also very honorable, that people give uh, to a purpose without mentioning their own name, uh, it is very honorable. It's actually the ideal uh, way of giving, because then one can assure that it's a non-egoistic giving, because the donor is simply not known. Then uh, I would recommend uh, contacting a, a local lawyer or a, another lawyer. Uh, to contact me regarding this seeding the Dhamma in Denmark project. Thank you for your attention. May many, many beings become thus happy thereby. Namo. Tasso. Bhagavato. Arahato. Sama Sambuddhasa, worthy, honorable, and perfectly, perfectly self enlightened was the blessed Buddha indeed. Thank you.